Hey guys, Dave with First Place Auto Parts, and today we're at the Tri-5 Nationals in Bowling Green, Kentucky at Beach Bend Raceway Park. It's about to get loud here. We're near the staging lanes, but we're going to cover this event for you today. I mean, we're going to look at a lot of really cool Tri-5 Chevrolets, including the 55, 56, and 57. It's an epic everything that is Tri-5s. We're going to have drag racing, we're going to have gassers, we're going to have cool show cars. So you stay tuned and make sure you watch all the coverage of the Tri-5 Nationals right here on the First Place Auto Parts YouTube channel. Hey guys, if you like today's video, please consider subscribing to the First Place Auto Parts YouTube channel. We're going to continually be adding new videos every week where we show you how to put new parts on. We take a look at the latest parts that are available and we go to some pretty cool car guy stuff. I'm pretty sure you're going to want to see. Every August, Tri-5 Chevrolet owners make the Mecca to Beach Bend Raceway in Bowling Green, Kentucky for the nation's largest show that is everything Tri-5 Chevrolets. Beach Bend Raceway is located on the grounds of the land where time stood still known as Beach Bend Park. The park was opened in 1898 and features one of the nation's largest still operational wooden roller coasters and water parks. Think about it, this place has been entertaining this community for over 120 years. Racing at the park started in 1949, utilizing a dirt drag strip that eventually got paved being built in the early 50s to meet the demand of a new sport called drag racing. The show, which heavily used the drag strip for test and tune and exhibition runs, utilizes every acre that the drag strip has, including the paved infields and the rolling green grass covering the hills that surrounds much of the drag strip. And you can't talk about the drag strip without mentioning the covered spectator stands, which stayed packed over the three-day event. Seating is provided by wooden fold-down chairs that were originally used as seating at a Nashville baseball field and impart a comfortable, laid-back feeling instantly once you rest your backside in them. Man, if these seats and steps could talk, the story they would tell would be awesome. Opening ceremonies consisted of the national anthem, which everyone stood for, that consisted of an artfully played electric guitar that moaned out the beauty of that amazing song without a spoken word, but in a way that everyone understood its meaning. Everywhere you looked and walked, the show was packed with 55, 56, and 57 Chevrolets of every build level, body style, and color. And it didn't matter if you liked your Tri-5 served up as a gasser, which I do, or a resto mod type build. They were all represented and represented very well in large quantities. And these two showed the unique attitude a 55 Chevy can have, either dropped in the weeds or nose high reaching for the sky. Either way, they're just plain cool. If you like your cars to be factory correct, on hand were a bevy of painstakingly correctly restored cars. Also in attendance were a slew of what were called day two cars because of their modifications in every color under the sun. And wheels? Yeah, every type of wheel was represented at the show as well. Stock steelies with hubcaps and bias ply tires. Deep dish craggers wrapped in grippy fat pro track tires. Steelies with pie crust cheater slicks on the rear. To aluminum slots with full on drag slicks, they were all doing their part to put the horsepower to the ground and looking the part they were chosen to play. And speaking of horsepower, all the kings were there to play, so let's count the ways. Straight six cylinders and dual quad 283 showing us how it was done when the cars were new. Of course, fuel injected swap late model LS engines found their way into many an engine bay. And then there were the traditional mills that sported cross ram dual quads, four and eight carbureted top small blocks, and for the ultimate normally aspirated induction, there were mills sporting dual quads atop tunnel rams fueling both big and small block power plants. And for those that liked their induction systems to be a step above normally aspirated, there were root superchargers huffing large quantities of fuel into waiting combustion chambers wailing out their telltale wine. Joe was not limited to just sedans or hardtop cars either, no way. On hand were many nice wagons, nomads, and pickup trucks of every style, level of finish, and patina. No doubt about it, trucks got used and still get used today. Patina looks killer on these rigs. Cars had names on them that announced their intentions. And a note to fathers, be sure to hide your daughters if one of these shows up in your driveway to pick her up for a date. The real deal was certainly that, and judging by this vehicle, the wagon could indeed hang the front wheels high on launch. Buddy's garage was responsible for all of this owner's lost wages. Poison Ivy can be cool and the Midnight Express looked badass dressed in black. 
And a car wouldn't be a Tri-5 Chevy without fuzzy dice hanging from the mirror and a spring-loaded dash topper that wiggled and shook as the G's created at launch had its way with the Hula Girl or the plastic Jesus lending protection and who was socially responsible in wearing his face mask. The 1955-57 Chevys are over 60 years old and have weathered a lot of storms. Where else would you find a wet paint sign being used as a backseat divider, an original die-cast dealer tag still on the trunk, or scrapes and bruises earned through hard work, or better yet, paint worn through to the primer on the upper door? How many arms had to hang out of this door to wear the paint then? I don't know, but my guess is it was a lot of them. Now, I like my Tri-5s as gassers. How many other cars could have carried a movie like the two-lane blacktop that had barely 10 sentences spoken in it? Only one, and it was a primer gray gasser with a Muncie Rock Crusher gearbox that could have done it and did. Gassers are like moving art, and they tell a story of what hot rodders did back in the day when horsepower overpowered tire technology. Nose high and stripped of anything that didn't make it go fast in a straight line, they are pure automotive poetry if you ask me. It didn't matter if your favorite was a 55, a 56, or maybe a 57 Chevy. There was something for everyone to like in the show field. Even Marilyn Monroe was blown away by the sheer quality and the quantity of the cars present at this show. If the car show was a cake, then the drag racing was the frosting. Everything from cars with enough horsepower and hook to make the front wheels lose their battle with gravity to the test and tune guys tackling the 1,320 feet to see what their cars could do, the staging lanes were packed all day. And many a tire's life expectancy was cut way short in the burnout boxes and as the drivers performed the drag strip ritual of heating the tires for maximum stickiness, which in many times resulted in a shoebox jerking the front wheels as the rear tires clawed for traction. And speaking of traction, if you ever line up next to a green 56 Chevy with a big old Pro Street scoop on it, give it plenty of room and respect. Sky high launches and dragging the rear bumper results in it almost going straight and doing all that very quickly. Big show at the drag strip were the 200 mile an hour door slammers that had such a high level of build attention and detail, they would have looked right at home in the show field. These cars are wicked bad and performed half-track burnouts to the joy of the crowd and to the disdain of the rear racing slicks. Once these bad boys launch, you better be quick with your camera because they only took 8 seconds to get to the end of the quarter mile. The local Holiday Inn is ground zero for the show after the show and is where many car owners and the spectators stay when in Bowling Green. The parking lot is packed with vintage iron that gets driven back and forth to the show every day and the parking lot is filled with lots of mid-50s iron and it just doesn't happen very often and is a sight to see and it gives you a glimpse of what it must have been like back in the day when walking out of the motel after a night's stay. Guys, what an amazing show. If you ever bored in late August or just want to hang out with a bunch of your car buddies, make sure you get to Bowling Green, Kentucky in late August and get by the Tri-5 Nationals. Look, not even, even if you're not a Tri-5 guy, there's so much going on here. It's an event you've got to see. And Beach Bend Raceway Park is unlike any other drag strip I've ever seen, and I've seen a lot of them. First Place Auto Parts offers a lot of parts for the Tri-5 Chevrolets. Look, I'm a Tri-5 guy myself with my 56 Chevy Gasser. Make sure you go to First Place Auto Parts to find all the parts you need for your Tri-5 Chevrolet. And make sure you get to Beach Bend Raceway Park to see some really cool racing action as well. Until next time, keep the hammer down and keep it between the guardrails.